Oh, oh there you right go. Right there. Yeah, I saw that. I was reeling it in. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, goodness. Get him in the boat. That's a nice fish. Although oh, I thought he, I thought he threw it. Nicely done. Get him in the boat. Look at that. Oh, and it fell out of his mouth. <laughs> the general. <laughs> Look at that fish. Holy moly, that's a good fish. All right. Hey, folks. Glenn May here with BassResource.com. It's summertime, dog days of summer. We're looking at 100 degrees today. It is really warm. And guess what? We're catching quality fish up shallow. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that. We're using a Senko type baits to catch these fish. And I want to walk you through how we're doing that, how we're rigging it, what gear we're using. And then I'm going to show you a little bit about how we're actually catching these fish. Okay, so let me talk you a little bit about what we're using today. Today we're using Berkeley Powerbait Max Scent the general it's this puppy right here so, and i'm fishing it basically th three different ways one of it's like this this is just your typical weightless way of fishing a, a, a senko type bait another way to fish it which is very effective is wacky rigged and a lot of, there's a lot of different ways people wacky rig but for the most part i just use what i'm fishing and there you go now my wacky rigged <laughs> it's very straightforward simple easy to do i use the the equipment that I already have. I'm not a big fan of having one trick ponies in my my tackle box because I know there's a lot of different jigs you can get, there's a lot of different hooks you can get, you can get certain bands that go around here and tools to put the bands on, and all this stuff to rig, wacky rig. I don't do that uh, again because it just clutters up my tackle box because if I'm not fishing it this way then I just got stuff in my tackle box that I'm not using. So uh, wacky rig is just weightless like this is how I'm fishing the general today. If I want to add a little weight to it, I'll just put a little bullet weight in the front and I'm good to go. Just repurpose stuff that I already have. Just like that. And I lost my general. No. I little sucker. Okay, right in the cheek. There we go. He's a little guy, but I'll take him. Whee! <laughs> Acrobatics. <laughs> Another rig I'm using to get in those thick bushes and cover where the fish are hiding this time of year is a Texas rig, the General. And here I'm using a quarter ounce tungsten weight with a bobber stopper in the front. I've got it rigged with Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8 30 pound line. It's a braid, so this is perfect for fishing in, those, in that cover. It's got lots of sensitivity, abrasion resistance, it's really powerful so I can fish it in all that cover and I don't have to worry about my line. Now that's what I'm using and also I have that rigged up on a on a seven foot medium heavy power rod with a fast action tip. This is your workhorse kind of rod. There's all kinds of manufacturers that make them. Make sure you got a few of them in your boat because you can fish all kinds of lures on them with it and this time we're fishing that Texas Rig General and on it, I have this reel. This is the Revo SX bait casting reel. This is an awesome, awesome reel. Smooth casting. With, paired with this fire line, you can cast really, really far. And it's got over 20 pound, 24 pounds of drag, which I really like because, let's face it, a lot of the, the, the bait casters that come out today are somewhere between 12 and 15 pounds of drag. It says 24 pounds. This is perfect for horsing those fish out of deep cover, back in the weeds, back in the bushes, where you're gonna find them. You can get them out paired with this fire line. This is a great combination that you can use to get all those fish out and not worry about breaking them off or getting them wrapped up and not getting them out. So that's what we're using today. Now that I've showed you what we're doing, how we're rigging it, let me show you how to fish. You go. 
Nice. They're in here. Come here, you. Glenn's getting the net. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Oh, come on, Glenn. Come on, Glenn. There we go. <laughs> There we go. He's got a sword in his tongue. Yeah, he does. So the thing about summertime is in the early morning and in the evening hours, the fish are gonna be shallow. They're gonna be roaming around and actively chasing bait fish. So you can catch them on fast moving baits like top water, such as buzz baits and poppers, or you can fish them on spinner baits, crank baits, and you're gonna catch fish doing that. But when the sun gets really high and wide in the middle of the sky and you've got these shadows, you can see it on my face. Well, that's when the fish bury up in the cover. And I know a lot of people think that the fish go out deep, they're going to go up there from super shallow now they're going to go 500 yards out even further to the deeper parts of the lake the, the main points the ledges the humps the channels that sort of thing well yeah there's a population of bass that are out there that are that deep and you can certainly fish them and catch them but a lot of those fish that are up shallow in the morning they don't go far what they do is they go up and bury themselves up in this cover that's right around nearby. Look around, see what you can, what's in your lake. It could be docks, it could be logs, it could be down trees, could be flooded bushes, could be hydrilla, milfoil, any kind of weed patches such as lily pads. That's where the fish are going to go. And it's not because they want to get out of the heat or because they want to get out of the sun, but it's because that's where the bait fish go to hide from their predators. And wherever you find the bait fish, that's where the bass are. If the bait fish move, the bass will go with them all the time. But so this time of year, you're going to have a lot of those fry that are growing up, trying to get big for the winter, and they're going to be, just go into go to a place where there's a lot of weeds. Go look. You'll see all this little fry, little bait fish running around in there, a little bluegill and whatnot. Well, if you see that, you can bet the bass are there too. So the key about fishing on bright sunny days like this is looking for the shadows. Not so much the sun, but where are the shadows? Because that's where the bass are gonna set up shop where they can ambush their prey. So if say you're fishing a, a long line of docks, if one side of the docks is sunny and the other side is shady, just fish the shady side. You can be a lot more effective that way and be more productive and, and, and get that whole stretch of docks in a lot more, uh, shorter time and catch a lot more fish because you're not wasting any casts on the sunny side. Same thing when you're looking at weeds, when you're looking at flooded bushes, Pay attention to where that bite is. I bet you it's on the shady side. That's the first cast that I always make is on the shady side. Now the two ways I'm doing it today is with the weightless general and then also with the Texas rig general to get in there. So I like to fish a lot with the weightless because I like to get in and around the outside of that cover before I go in deep. So I'll be fishing that and see if I can entice them to come out and hit it. Say for example, uh, beaver huts. We have a lot of those in this lake and those fish will will be in there. You can entice quite a few out of them by casting to the outside edges of that hut. And then when you've caught those, go in with the weighted Texas rig. And I like to use that to get in there and go a little bit deep. Sink it down where they're buried up inside those, those nooks and crannies of that uh, beaver hut. Same thing with the weeds. Get up there where they're buried in there. You can use that with this weight. I'm not using a heavy, heavy weight. I'm not punching. I'm using actually pretty lightweight. Because what I like to do is once I get it in that cover, I like to work it real slow, real slow. Just throw it in there, let it hit to the bottom, and then crawl it over the tops of those limbs or those branches, or if I'm in the weeds, crawl it through those weeds. If I get over a branch, like get that line over the branch, I like to bring it up over that branch and then just shake the bait just a little bit and then let it flutter right back down. So I don't need a real heavy weight to do that, otherwise I'll just thump, drop real fast and it won't match the speed of how I'm fishing the bait key thing during the summertime is when you come up against a you know a little spot where there's some weeds or a little patch of bushes or a string of docks if you catch a fish off that stop and fish it again make sure you keep making casts to that because if there's one bass there it's very likely there's quite a few there's probably a, a concentration of bait fish there and there's a whole wolf pack in there feeding on them so i can't tell you how many times i've caught multiple fish out of the same exact spot during the summertime. They just congregate that way. So don't, I see a lot of guys do this. They'll catch a fish, 
And by the time they unhook them and take pictures and all that stuff, they've drifted off the spot and then they just keep on going down the, down the bank. Don't be that guy. Turn around, come back to that spot where you just caught that fish and throw again, see if you can catch some more out of that spot. This is why I have it rigged up a couple different ways because I can catch them one way and then if it's not working or if I you know, only catch a few off that, then I can flip over to this and flip it another way and catch some more fish. You'd be surprised how that little change of, of presentation, you can pull a lot more fish out of the same exact spot. Yeah. He thinks he's big. Good job. He thinks he's big. He's yeah. mad. Yeah. He's mad. You got him hooked in the the mouth. I got him hooked somewhere. Right through the nose, I believe. Now you can do a snapshot. Because <laughs> I got the bait. There you go. There you go. Right up to the camera. So anyway, that's how I fish it during the summertime. Just be prepared. It's, summer is all about taking advantage of those opportunities. Be versatile. Pay attention to where those bites are and you'll catch a lot more fish. I hope those tips help. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.